Both new and old members of the Ghostbusters must band together to protect their world and prevent a second Ice Age from happening when a discovered ancient artifact unleashes an evil force. In 1904 in New York, Ghostbusters were called to deal with an incident at the Manhattan Adventurer Society. However, instead of flames, they found a room covered in ice and everyone inside was frozen. The Ghostbusters noticed one strange individual sitting still, but unlike the others, this person wasn't frozen and was holding a strange orb that seemed to be closing on its own. The Ghostbusters slowly approached the strange person and reached out for the artifact. Unexpectedly, the person's eyes snapped open and it seemed to have triggered something because those who were frozen suddenly exploded. Inside the orb were only darkness and storms until glowing eyes snapped open. In the present day, Gary Gruberson is speeding down the Manhattan streets in pursuit of a Hell's Kitchen ghost called the Sewer Dragon. He is with his girlfriend, Callie Spangler, and her children, Phoebe and Trevor. Phoebe moved the advanced chair out of the car and struck the Sewer Dragon with a nuclear accelerator. Trevor then released his RC car and attempted to capture the ghost with it, but failed when the Sewer Dragon went higher. So Callie released her drone and chased after the Sewer Dragon. Once they captured the Sewer Dragon, Phoebe went back inside the car, narrowly dodging a car. However, they got into trouble for causing so much damage during their pursuit of the Sewer Dragon. When Mr. Murray learned that Phoebe is just 15 years old and the Ghostbusters don't actually get paid for busting ghosts, he promised that he was going to hold the adult Ghostbusters responsible and that he would never stop until the Ghostbusters' home was taken down. After their run-in with Mr. Murray, Callie and Gary decided to kick Phoebe out of the team for a while, just until she turns 18. They had just relocated to New York City after the events in Somerville, Oklahoma, to help in re-establishing the Ghostbusters, and they couldn't afford to make any more mistakes. But Phoebe hated the idea of spending three years of her life being an ordinary underage girl who has nothing better to do in her life. After the disagreement with Phoebe, Callie and Gary went down the basement, and the latter put the sewer dragon into the containment unit. However, the containment unit suddenly started shaking excessively. Gary and Callie pulled the lever down with difficulty and checked the containment unit only to see that it was still working well, making them confused about what just happened. Meanwhile, Ray Stance had started a business of his own with his assistant slash editor podcast. He is the host of a show called Repossessed that the podcast is uploading to social media platforms. It's a show where he's measuring the spiritual energy of everyday objects. When he's not hosting the show, he's buying or collecting objects that he will then examine to see if they are cursed or not. Phoebe visited Ray Stance to give him the sample of the moon sign he requested. Phoebe followed the podcast downstairs where she could put the sample jar. She was both creeped out and disgusted when she saw a bunch of little nightmares messing around. Meanwhile, a man named Nadim Razmundi entered the shop to sell Ray a box filled with cursed objects. Among the objects is an orb with glyphs on it, which piqued the interest of Ray, who recognized the brass object as an artifact used to trap evil spirits. Ray pulled out his psychokinetic energy meter to scan the orb and take a PKE reading. As soon as he turned on the PKE meter, the device released a psychic charge because of the amount of energy in the orb and it almost destroyed the containment unit in the Ghostbusters headquarters. Janine Melnitz visited the Ghostbusters firehouse headquarters to check on the containment unit, and Gary expressed his opinion. The Ghostbusters had been around since 1984, and they had been using the same containment unit to lock captured ghosts in. Gary thinks it's not a good idea to keep using the same containment unit to stuff ghosts in. Janine agreed to let Winston's engineers know about the problem in the containment unit, and Gary learned that Winston's engineers are working on super secret underground ghost busting stuff. Trevor noticed dirty slimy stuff leaking from the attic and grabbed the ghost trap to capture the ghost in the attic. However, when he checked on the ghost, it phased through him and escaped. The Ghostbusters received an alert of a ghost and they immediately left their headquarters to go after the ghost, leaving an upset Phoebe behind. To comfort herself, Phoebe went to the park to play chess by herself when the chess pieces on the other side suddenly started moving on their own. Phoebe and the unseen ghost played chess for a bit before a ghost named Melody revealed herself. The two of them talked for a while while playing chess before Melody just disappeared without a word. The next day, one of Winston's engineers and a resident probatonist, Lars, came by the Ghostbusters firehouse quarters to check the containment unit again when the containment unit's door got hit from the other side. They were all confused, and Gary wondered if the ghosts were trying to get outside. Winston, Janine, and more engineers came by a while later, and they studied the design Callie's father made of the constipation unit. 
Lars explained that the containment is actually like a large ghost ship that could hold and stabilize particles of ghosts. After 40 years of compiling ghosts into the containment unit, they ran out of space, and there were no plans made for this kind of issue. Winston then brought the Ghostbusters to the Paranormal Research Center. Trevor saw his friend Lucky and embraced her. Winston informed them that everything in the Paranormal Research Center was all the cursed objects Ray had collected and sent to them. Lars explained that every emotionally charged object contains a ghost bud, and he showed how they take those ghosts from the objects. The Winston engineers created a fluid moment of chemical transition by fighting the atoms. They would put the object inside a machine, and that machine would pull the ghost buds from the object and bring them into the chamber, which would then dispose of them. Winston then showed them the new containment units when Ray appeared, handing over the orb. After their short visit to the Paranormal Research Center, the Ghostbusters went back to the headquarters and left again to capture some ghosts, leaving Phoebe behind again. A moment after they left, the headquarters telephone rang, and Phoebe learned it was another customer asking for a Ghostbuster. Phoebe is geared up with the podcast, excited to finally have some action. Meanwhile, in the Paranormal Research Center, True Tuner, Lars and Lucky were still working late at night. Lucky put the orb inside the ionic separator to extract the ghost inside the orb. However, the machine malfunctioned, and the ghost inside the orb was fighting back against extraction. Strangely, the other ghost seemed to be getting agitated, and due to the power being down, the ghost almost escaped. Lars rushed to the machine and grabbed the orb, but it hurt his hand, and he dropped the orb to the ground. Evie and Podcast headed to the diner where they received the call, and Phoebe prepared her nuclear accelerator. Upon seeing that the ghost was none other than Melody, Phoebe hesitated, and this gave Melody enough time to escape before Phoebe could blast her with the nuclear accelerator. Phoebe returned to the headquarters alone and found Melody floating in front of her window. She invited Melody inside and showed her around. They stopped by the containment unit, and Phoebe explained how the containment unit holds the ghosts. Melody slowly approached Phoebe, and the two of them shared an intimate conversation until Callie called for Phoebe, causing Melody to leave immediately. Melody walked on the streets and stopped when she felt the presence of another ghost. She informed the unseen ghost that she's going as fast as she can in doing what she was told to do. The next day, Phoebe was woken up from her sleep and summoned to the basement, where she saw that the walls around the containment unit had been destroyed and the containment unit was freezing. In the Paranormal Research Center, the orb was being tested again, and they noticed how the other ghosts were acting around it. They kept the orb, and Trevor, Lucky, and Lars headed to Nadim's apartment to ask where he got the orb. Nadim showed them his grandmother's special back room, which he found one day by accident. Lucky pointed an advanced weapon at Nadim and brought him to the Paranormal Research Center, where Peter was the one to interrogate him. Phoebe was in Ray's shop talking to Ray when Podcast showed them the video he took of the orb. There was a weird sound that they hadn't heard before, and Ray recognized it as ancient verbiage. The Podcast suggested investigating the orb, and the three of them left the shop for their new secret mission. They headed to the library, where Ray got a man named Hubert Wartsky to listen to the ancient verbiage. Hubert informed them that the language had been dead for thousands of years, and when he found out that the ancient language came from the orb, he led them to the old library and told them that the orb had been discovered so long ago that it wasn't photographed nor painted. It was carved in a stone. Hubert explained that the orb is a magical prison for a phantom god called Garaka. 4,000 years ago, Garaka served Samudari, a bloodthirsty king, and helped conquer half of Central Asia. However, Samudari grew suspicious of Garaka's ambition and got Garaka captured. Garaka was tortured, and his horn was ripped out of his head. Garaka grew angry and planned on making his own army of undead to wage war against humanity. But before Garaka could destroy the collective bronchial tubes of Greater South Asia, he met a band called the Firemasters. The Firemasters, mythical spirits, captured Garaka and trapped him inside the orb. Many years later, the incident in New York where a room full of people froze to death occurred. Hubert let them listen to the audio recorded during the New York incident when suddenly a ghost appeared and ran away. They all ran and parted ways to capture the ghost in the library. While Phoebe and Podcast went in pursuit of the ghost, Ray found another ghost that almost scared him to death. They went out of the library to follow the ghost and Ray found the trash bag in front of a lion statue. The ghost moved to the statue and Phoebe pulled out her nuclear accelerator to destroy the lion. Despite doing it to capture the ghost, Phoebe was still brought to the police station for destroying public property. 
In the police station, Winston was scolding Phoebe when Murray entered the room to thank Phoebe for giving him the opportunity he needed to put an end to the Ghostbusters. Callie reprimanded Phoebe for not behaving and decided to fire her permanently. Upset, Phoebe talked back to her mother and Gary, who was usually too nice to even scold them nicely, finally snapped. He told Phoebe to stop being selfish and open her eyes to see that all he and Callie had been doing was trying to protect her. On the other hand, Ray and Winston were having a disagreement of their own. Winston was disappointed that Ray got himself in trouble just to investigate the orb. Winston knew that Ray was only doing something he'd always loved, but he was afraid that with Ray's old age, he would only keep putting himself in more danger. The Ghostbusters, both new and old members, returned to the Ghostbusters headquarters, where they showed Nadim the containment unit. Ray revealed to Nadim that his grandmother was the guardian of the orb. For thousands of years, Nadim's family had been selflessly guarding the orb, and now Ray wanted Nadim to claim his destiny of being a firemaster. Nadim didn't want to believe that he was a firemaster, but when he accidentally controlled the flames of the lighter, he was speechless. Gary knocked on Phoebe's door to apologize to her for what he said at the police station. He stood outside Phoebe's door, talking about how much he cared for her, even when they weren't blood relatives. But Phoebe wasn't in her room. She was in the park, waiting for Melody. When Melody appeared, Phoebe opened up to her, and the ghost made sure to take her mind off her problems. Melody expressed her disappointment that she and Phoebe exist on different dimensional planes, separated by quantum physics. Phoebe then revealed that there is a way for her to be a ghost, even just for a little while. All they had to do was sneak into the paranormal research center. Melody was reluctant at first, but Phoebe reassured her that it's not lethal and she can still return to her body. Phoebe and Melody then broke into the paranormal research center and used the ion separator to separate Phoebe's spirit from her body. It was a success and Phoebe approached Melody, who suddenly looked guilty. Melody apologized, and before Phoebe could learn why Melody was apologizing, her eyes started glowing, and she lost control of herself. Melody explained that the human voice is the key to destroying the orb and freeing Garaka. But Garaka can't control humans, only the ghosts, and now he can control Phoebe. Chanting a spell in Japanese, Phoebe was forced to watch as she was used to shatter the orb that freed Garaka. The room was swallowed by darkness, and Phoebe looked at Garaka in fear before her spirit returned to her human body. Lucky entered the room and struck Garaka with the nuclear accelerator, but Garaka destroyed the nuclear accelerator and escaped. Gary and Callie rushed to the research center and were extremely worried when they learned of what happened. Garaka, on the other hand, went looking for the Firemaster. He went to Nadim's home and retrieved his throne from Nadim's grandmother's special back room. After obtaining his throne, Garaka wreaked havoc on the beach and rained ice spikes. Gary, Callie, and Phoebe returned to the headquarters and told the others what happened. Podcast told them not to worry because they have Nadim, the Firemaster, but the others could only look on in embarrassment as Nadim could barely move the flames with his newly discovered power. Both new and old members of the Ghostbusters prepared themselves to face Garaka. However, they needed brass to use against Garaka. The Ghostbusters proton packs used nickel and zinc as primary drivers for spectral agitation, and Phoebe crafted a brass plate component for her pack, which could give them a chance against Garaka. Ray and Janine were pleasantly surprised when they opened the door, and Peter entered the room, looking excited to join the battle. Suddenly, a ghost manipulated the Ghostbusters' car and tried to hit the older members of the Ghostbusters. The ghost kept messing with them and even almost struck Trevor with the nuclear accelerator. Luckily, Nadim finally got control of his power and stopped the ghost from blasting Trevor. The ghost possessed a pizza and tried to escape, but was eaten by the glutton ghost that had been residing in the headquarters attic. While everyone else was inside the headquarters, Phoebe was out with Melody. She wanted to strike Melody with the nuclear accelerator, but their short friendship, despite it having been a fake one, was still important to her. Melody apologized for betraying Phoebe, explaining that she only did it so she could see her family again, and she believed that helping Garaka was the only way. Phoebe tried to convince Melody to change her mind and help them defeat Garaka instead. While Phoebe and Melody were talking, the others were finally facing Garaka himself. But their nuclear accelerators didn't work on Garaka. Everyone, including Garaka, fell silent when Nadim slid down the pole wearing the Firemaster armor. Nadim distracted Garaka with a small talk before he proudly revealed the lighter he was supposed to use against Garaka. But he used up all the lighter's fluid, and now his plan has failed. Annoyed, Garaka unleashed his power and breached the containment unit, releasing all the ghosts trapped inside it. Melody bid farewell to Phoebe before disappearing 
and Phoebe ran back inside to meet up with others who had already been frozen. Using her proton pack with a brass component in it, Phoebe struck Garaka and was able to cause damage before Garaka released ice to freeze Phoebe. Garaka reached out to steal Phoebe's spirit, but then Melody appeared, lighting up a match that Nadim, who was able to dodge Garaka's ice power, used to attack Garaka. Phoebe and the others were unfrozen, and Phoebe's nuclear accelerator with a brass component joined Nadim's flames in striking Garaka. The podcast attempted to use the drone trap to capture Garaka, but it failed. While Phoebe and Nadim were busy with Garaka, Ray, Peter, Winston, and Janine went down the basement and used the containment unit to reduce criticality by neutralizing the mass energy and density. They pulled the lever down, and it successfully entrapped Garaka and some of the ghosts that were released. They all cheered when Garaka was finally defeated, and the light above the containment unit turned green. Phoebe approached Melody, who handed her the match she always carried with her, and with one final goodbye, Melody disappeared, departing for the afterlife to finally reunite with her family. The whole city cheered for the Ghostbusters, and Mayor Walter Peck, who always wanted to bring the Ghostbusters down, was forced to support them in fear of receiving disapproval from the netizens. He reinstated Phoebe and pretended to be really happy for the Ghostbusters. While everyone was celebrating, the attic ghost suddenly flew out of the headquarters, chased by the sewer dragon. The Ghostbusters grabbed their packs and chased after the ghosts who were still roaming free, the crowd cheering them on as they went.